I'm with Carl Hastrich, who's with the Biomimicry Institute and who teaches at the uh, Ontario College of Art and Design, or OCAD as we call it. Yep. And uh, Carl, explain what you're doing here at the Green Living Show. Okay, so at the Green Living Show, where uh, um, I'm here answering questions about biomimicry. Um, Can you give just for the people, even though Tim yep. McGee, who's also at the Institute, new as a regular tree hugger con contributor, has explained it. Can you give me the short definition for of our Of course. Reading? So the shortest definition is to take inspiration um, from the natural world and find ways of copying and applying those principles and understandings into design. So in essence, how can the natural world teach us to rethink the way that we make things, rethink the way that we design things? Um, and on its deepest level, it's about learning from nature to inform the way that we, we make things and design. Can you give me some examples? Okay, so uh, um, the example over here on the left uh, by Jay Harmon for Pack Scientific is um, a design for a propeller. It's actually an impeller that is revolutionizing or sort of uh, uh, changing the way that we see fluid dynamics and moving air and water. So the idea was that he t instead of forcing air to do something unnatural or forcing uh, water to do something natural, like our traditional fan that pushes things outwards, he um, took lessons from the way kelp beds sway and move in the water and deal with the pounding surf, looked at patterns in nature for how it deals with, with moving air and moving water, and designed uh, um, this impeller that actually pulls water through as opposed to pushing water out. Um, and it allows water to do what it naturally likes to do, which is to move in a spiral, which is to flow. And so what it does is for a fraction of the amount of energy required, you can move um, enormous amounts of water, but one of the major benefits is that because you're pulling water instead of pushing water out, you don't get it bouncing around in pipes. Right. So you don't lose efficiencies, you don't, you don't have to um, generate noise and, and use up a whole bunch of power that, that, that is unnecessary. Um, is it in production? Is it being used? It took him seven years to go from making a prototype that proved it right. to make it commercialized because people didn't believe him. He, huh. he put the object in front of them, he, he put these tiny little propeller on the back of a boat and would motor across water and people simply wouldn't believe him. So, um, but now he's, he's, he, he's somehow uh, uh, convinced the disbelievers enough that um, it's going into refrigerators, it's going into um, HVAC systems, it's going into computers, it's going into everything. Um, and it's being licensed for all sorts of applications and really has the benefit that if we replaced every fan with, some, uh, with one of his fans, right. the amount of energy savings would be incredible. Absolutely incredible. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you.